WFYI podcast brought to you by Bloomington, Indiana, an American college town offering food and drink, college sports, outdoor activities, live music, cool art, and good times daily. Everyone is welcome in Bloomington. More information at visitbloomington.com. This is WFYI News Now. It's April 10th, and I'm Abriana Heron. On today's show, the Curtis Hill trial is canceled just days before it was set to begin. The FSSA implements a waitlist for its aged and disabled waiver, a new law's impact on the civics designation for high school students. And Indiana does not have enough attorneys, and the state Supreme Court is trying to figure out what to do about it. You can committee this to things to death, but what are the short-term solutions? And let's look at those. Those stories coming up, but first. A Hamilton County school district won a federal legal fight against a student who started an anti-abortion club. The student says the school violated her First Amendment right by revoking approval for the club. From WFYI's education desk, Rachel Fredette reports the pricey court battle may not be over. A student at Noblesville High School started a local affiliate of the anti-abortion club Students for Life in 2021. But just a month later, the club's approval was revoked. The student filed a lawsuit that accused school leaders of restricting the club because of its cause. District leaders said they were concerned the group was not student-led. A federal judge in the Southern District Court of Indiana ruled the school district did not violate that student's rights. Rather, they sought to enforce the school's rules for clubs. Noblesville schools spent $200,000 to battle the complaint. Lawyers for Noblesville Students for Life said they are mulling further legal action. Today, the anti-abortion club still exists at Noblesville High School. I'm Rachel Fredette. Monday was supposed to mark the start of a week-long civil jury trial involving Curtis Hill on allegations that he groped four women in 2018 while he was attorney general. But a Marion County judge canceled the trial just days before it began, citing consultation with attorneys for both sides and a mediator suggesting a settlement in the case might be near. The Indiana Supreme Court temporarily suspended Hill's law license in 2020 after it found he criminally battered former state representative Mara Candelaria Reardon, Gabrielle McLemore, Nikki De Silva, and Samantha Lozao. A special prosecutor declined to bring criminal charges against Hill in 2018. The women later sued Hill in civil court. The former attorney general is currently running for Indiana governor. And Hoosiers with disabilities who want to age in place may have a harder time accessing services under an important Medicaid waiver. As Indiana Public Broadcasting's Abigail Ruman reports, the Family and Social Services Administration will implement a waitlist for the aged and disabled waiver as part of its effort to address the state's Medicaid shortfall. FSSA recently announced the waiver reached the maximum capacity of slots. In July, the agency will have 5,000 additional slots that can be split between the aged and disabled waiver and another home and community-based services waiver. Kim Dotson is the CEO of the ARC of Indiana. She says the wait for services could already be as long as two years, and the number of people on the wait list already surpasses the total number of slots that will be available in July. Every week, they go without services every day. They go without services could be life-threatening. Dodson says wait lists are common, but in recent years, the aged and disabled waiver hasn't had one. She says she hopes the wait list isn't around for long, but that depends on efforts from the General Assembly and the governor. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Abigail Ruman. Indiana schools could award a new excellence in civic engagement designation on their high school transcripts in coming years. Indiana Public Broadcasting's Kirsten Adair reports a new law requires the Indiana Department of Education to develop guidelines to determine how students can qualify for the new designation. The designation was proposed by the IDOE as part of Indiana's new graduation requirements. The department could consider whether individual students volunteer and engage in their communities. Students can also complete coursework that covers topics like constitutional government, civil society, and the democratic process. State lawmakers emphasized the importance of a strong civics education this year at the request of the Department of Education. Representative Vernon Smith says he strongly supports the creation of the civic engagement designation and urged the state to go further. I think we should even add into here uh, the teaching of patriotism again so that we become one nation as we should be rather than a divided nation. The designation will appear on transcripts starting with the class of 2029. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Kirsten Adair. And for our final story today, 
As Indiana faces a worsening attorney shortage, the state Supreme Court is convening a commission to develop solutions for the future of Indiana's law profession. Indiana Public Broadcasting's Brandon Smith reports on what the commission hopes to accomplish. Chief Justice Loretta Rush says the state's critical attorney shortage, particularly in rural communities, creates an access to justice problem. We've got to adapt and change in making sure that you you have fair, efficient, that you can afford legal services when some of your dearest rights are um, at stake. The commission will look at alternative licensure options, incentivizing public service and rural legal practices, and pathways to admission and education, among other issues. And Rush says initial recommendations for potential legislative and funding changes are due by August 1st, ahead of 2025's budget writing legislative session. You can committee this to things to death, but what are the short-term solutions? And let's look at those. A final report from the commission is due July 1st, 2025. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Brandon Smith at the State House. That's all for today's episode of WFYI News Now. Our podcast is produced by the following people who live in your community. Drew Dodlin, Kendall Antron, who composed the music for this podcast, and me, Abriana Heron. Our news director is Sarah Neal Estes. If you like today's episode, remember to subscribe and share. And follow WFYI on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube to check in on our newsroom throughout the day. Thanks for listening. We'll be back tomorrow.